happy watchmaking, happy watchmaking. So today's video is about magnification and lenses. So I was uh, conversing with a few people online and on the um, YouTube comments, uh, some folks was, were wondering uh, whether what type of magnification I use when I'm doing watchmaking. Um, and let me just explain it. So I go through a bunch of stuff I've gone through. You can spend a lot of money on magnification, uh, trying to find the right stuff, but I will get to what really works and what's really good, right? So let me start by going for the basics, okay? So a pair of glasses, you've got to be able to see down, see the bench, organize your work, get ready. So I do actually use my, my correction um, short-sightedness or whatever. I need these for reading. So I do use these glasses. I use them for reading and, and basically organizing my desk and, and that sort of thing in my, uh, in my work. And then when I'm... Um, um, I used to, I started off uh, watchmaking, I did like everybody else, bought myself a loop. So these were, I think, made in China loops, and you put them in your eye, and then when you've got them in your eye like this, your eye is very loose. I think, <coughs> I think when you get older, it's loose anyway, but, <laughs> so, so anyway, your eye gets, your eyes, uh, basically, the skin on both sides uh, was holding that, uh, holding that eyepiece in place. Um, and that's one use for uh, for your eye that you probably never thought you'd have, right? So, so anyway, this, these loops are pretty good. They come in in packs. They're uh, not that expensive, and and all different uh, magnifications. So for for normal work, as you're working on a watch, you're probably going to be using a times three um, and or a times five. So when you're doing pocket watch work, you can be a little bit further back because they're bigger watches. Um, and then uh, when you get to uh, like watch movements. You're going to have to get closer, so you're going to have to use like a times five to do your basic strip down and whatever you're doing with the watch movement. So, so I bought uh, a set of these originally, and I learned how to keep that in my eye, and I'd be able to look at stuff. And the other eye is just free to look to glance. You don't close this eye when you look through this eye. You keep them both open. It's the same thing I learned when I was in the army shooting a rifle. Um, you don't close one eye. Uh, wait now, wait now. Actually, you do. It's different than shooting a rifle. <laughs> you do have to close an eye, otherwise you get the powder in the other one. Anyway, so that's uh, that's um, that's what you do. You leave the other eye open, and, and your mind kind of forgets about this eye as you're doing work, right? So in lathe work, that's kind of interesting, but I'm going to get to that in a second. So this is the first type loop. So that's that. So I thought, okay, that's pretty good, but can I get another loop? Can I, can I take my glasses and use my glasses and also have a loop? Well, that doesn't work very well. So I got into these things here. Well, I'm left-handed and left-eyed, so I bought some of these online. They were made in China, I think. Not a very good, very good loop, but but still worked. But it's for really close stuff. So everything was like a probably a times uh, times seven or times eight uh, loop. So you'd be always looking like you you always have this thing in your face. This is way too close to work on 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 uh, pocket watches. Maybe okay with watches. But not good for pocket watches. So, so this one here, I was like, yeah, okay, that's nice, but it doesn't really work that well. So I thought, well, what, what will a double loop do, right? So, what the heck? Might as well get a double loop. So, wonderful Etsy or eBay. I went and said, get myself some double loops and see how close I can see stuff. So this was really good when you really wanted to look at the a pivot or something like that. But still, I've got a better solution than this. Um, <clears throat> so the double loop, and then you know, you fire one out of the way and and then you'd fire one forward. And I see a lot of jewelers and watchmakers uh, using a double loop, and I guess it's convenient because you're going to keep your glasses on, you can quickly look at something, and then just flip it out of the way. So, so this does work, and for people just doing watch repair, this is probably fine. Again, for pocket watches, you got to be back a bit further, and I do mainly pocket watches, although a couple of weeks ago I did a really nice Rolex, um, and, but I didn't use this because I've got another solution. So, so, that's <clears throat> so that was that, and then I said, okay, I saw... The quality of these the lenses wasn't too good, so I said, let me see what I can find that's nice. Eh? So, so I got <coughs> I researched the uh, Department of Nice, which usually means more expensive. Uh, nice equals more expensive. So I got these uh, Bosch and Lohm. Uh, I think they're German, but Bosch and Lohm. Um, they may be American, but anyway, it comes in a really nice case. Look at that, Bosch and Lohm. High end, right? Also with a loop, double loop here and with a clamp so it's got this little clamp here that clamps onto your your glasses and i really wish i was right-eyed 
because the right eye is a lot better and the clamp is it's made for different glasses I think than I have but it works so that works there if you're right eyed the angle is different here and it's easier so I'm left eyed so these are they work but they're a bit of a pia right so so again it's a double loop so you can get a I think it's a times times five and you end up with times ten in a loop right so these are great they're nice uh, never use them there you go so I'm not sure if that's a waste of money because maybe I'll use them in a, uh, in a couple of years time so so that was those loops and I kept looking okay what do I need what do I need I thought okay uh, let me get one of these flip over things right so what's this this is a flip over uh, loop here and I've got one attached so <clears throat> this is my go-to uh, magnification so what I did was I went to the drugstore I bought a times three or three whatever they call them three magnification um, here and so I got three so I can kind of be close to my work anyway it's like a, these are reading glasses um, so I've got three and then so I can do pocket watch work work with these no issue at all and then I just clamp this loop on and I've got I believe that these are I'll look at them again but I believe that these are like a times times three on top of that so I can get around this close so I'm around here so I do all my work with these so when I'm working on a pocket watch and I gotta get close in and I'll put this on I'll flip it up like that get out of the way flip it down again look at it um, <clears throat> I've also clipped on uh, one with higher magnification uh, when I was working on a watch a couple weeks ago so I was able to get closer closer to the watch and do work with this and then flip it out of the way so one of them was pocket watches the other one was a watch let me look at the loop and see what the magnification is if I can see it I'm not sure if I can actually see this it's probably worn out maybe it's worn out all right you can't see this one it should say it on the side it needs a little cleaning too I notice it's pretty dirty Ooh, lots of dirt in that loop so <clears throat> maybe I'll take this loop off and look at with the other loop <laughs> loop to loop this says uh there's one written on it but that's not right it's around a times three I think it flips over so anyway there's a piece of metal here and there's a clip so it works it re works really well so I love this uh, this is my go-to again like I said and I just clip that on and, <clears throat> and I'm able to uh, I'm able to get close enough to my work to get it done so that's 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 what I recommend I've seen a lot of discussion on the best loops to buy and the best this and metal loops and loops with holes in them um, if you've got this loop and a pair of glasses you can have a pair of glasses that are zero if you want um, <clears throat> but uh, you don't want them to fog up and I've seen loops I don't I may have one but I've seen loops with a hole in it right so that the loop can breathe and they don't have an issue so so when I'm doing lathe work what I do is I'll start my lathe work with my glasses like this and I'll start my main cuts on like five millimeters if I'm making like a balance staff and I'll go from the five millimeters down to when I'm when I'm working close to the pivots and I'm trying to get the uh, the conic shape on the back end of the pivot and I'll go to these so this these are cheap you can get them on eBay they cost like 10 bucks uh, they're made in China probably um, they go up and down I never bring them up right and what I did was I took there's two sides to them and there's also a light that's probably dead by now I've had these forever so there's a little battery and a light never used it not worth anything but these have detachable lenses on the end so I can take the lens here right on the end and I can just turn that like that and there's a box of lenses let me see if I can find that I think it's right here let me look behind me everything is always behind me including a uh, Elgin uh, watch parts right here in the staking set I don't know why I have that right there but anyway it's all about convenience so so I can this is a box and the box has got all kinds of lenses in it and these lenses go up to 20 I think yeah times 25 so these will go to see I can't see yeah times 25 so 10 15 20 25 so I use usually a 15 when I'm doing lathe work I'm pretty sure yeah it's a times 15 so I'll use a times 15 also what I use this for is if I've got myself a pocket watch let me grab one here this one's not it's not open I'm going to do some work on this one because it's a fake American pocket watch made by a Swiss company that used to make watches and try to sell them in America and they're really they're very interesting anyway 23 jewel fake American pocket watch anyway what I'll do is when I'm when I'm <coughs> when I'm uh, trying to I'll just tell you why when I use these glasses 
And I'm trying to nudge a pivot into a jewel hole with my famous nudging pivot into jewel hole tool. Um, that's how French people, by the way, describe things. They describe it by describing it, right? So they say the tool with the, has a long metal arm with the pointy thing on the end, and there's some French word, le poule, la ba 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 like that. So, and I'm half French, so I can say stuff like that. Anyway, I'll use this here, and I'll look through the edge of the pocket watch. It looks like an old one, um, like one of these big babies here. Let me grab one of this. This is a, this is the, it's an Omega pocket watch, right? And it's a full plate in the back, and if I opened it up, you'd see that. And I'll look in, inside on, the, on an angle here with this, with these glasses, because times 15, they stay in place. There's no stress on trying to keep it in my eye, even though it's not very difficult. Um, but I'll be able to look look really close and then tip, 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 and do that, right? So if I'm trying to look at uh, pallet stones, for example, on a watch, and I want to make sure that I'm like I'm lubricating the pallet zone, I'm not using my my three my stereo microscope behind me here, this baby here, which is really useful by the way, and that's my last magnification. Um, then I'll uh, <coughs> then I'll look at it here and I'll use my uh, my oil or whatever and I'll get in there with the right type of oil to, to oil the pallet stones. Um, <coughs> so and then you so you oil every second feet. So there is a every second foot of the escapement you oil and then it passes the oil to the pallet stone. That was one technique that a guy brought up and I kind of agree with that. It makes sense as, as opposed to trying to put the right amount of oil on the pallet stone. That's a squirrel moment. Squirrel. So so I use that for these. So when I'm working on a lathe though, and I've got a couple of videos of me working on lathes, like quite a few, um, <clears throat> I'll go to this pretty early. I, I do my initial cuts, like I said, with the other, with the, with the flip over glasses on this, right? And then I'll go to this at the end and I'll just, I'll be looking through these. I've sometimes gone to a to, to down to a 20 or 25 when I'm working on that last part of the pivot um, and I've got to like, burnish that or get it exactly right and I'm measuring it with my uh, jewel, jeweling measuring ruler there um, <clears throat> so I'll, I'll go to 25s with this specifically what I like about this though is that is that it leaves you basically you, got, you have no issue um, with managing this you just put them on and work right now here's what you got to do though. So I've got this off right now because I was working on looking inside of a of a, uh, a pocket watch and stuff, and I wasn't working on the lathe. If you're working on a lathe, then you have to take if I have it here somewhere. You have to take the other lens here and pop that on because you're going to get little shards of, of metal that are going to fly off that lathe and could hit you in the eye. I have. You can just your mind will forget this side as you work on this side. Your mind will completely forget that this is, you know, your, your eye is focused on both things. So don't let that bother you. If you really want to, take a piece of masking tape and just put it over the top of the lens and it'll black it out and then you can focus on the, on the lathe work without this bothering you at all, right? So that protects your eye from little pieces of metal flying out. So you don't need safety glasses for doing watchmaking parts like, like uh, balance staffs and stuff. Um, if I'm working on something that's big and I'm, I'm cutting something like a tool, uh, then I'll put on safety glasses. I don't have those with me, but I do have a pair of your normal C1A1 safety glasses. Let me oh, reach up here and see if I can grab a pair. Oh, look at this. Uh, I got These are all shitty. But I got a pair of safety glasses in uh, my other workshop, and they've got a lens here that's a times 3 right there, so I can put those safety glasses on and do lathe work. So I use that. Uh, that particular thing when I was building the world's best dual balance jobby doohickey for holding balances, right? Two sizes and I put little legs on it now and I made a little tiny bowl. I made a video about how to make that bowl and instead of screwing through the middle, I glued that on. So when I was making this and you know, all the cutting, I used actual safety glasses to do that and I built this, uh, built this on the weekend um, and it's pretty cool. So I've made a video on this because it's it's uh, I like this, but don't I'm not going to make a bunch of these for you guys. So if you want me to build you one, you're really going to have to be nice to me. So um, anyway, so I do use safety glasses with magnification because this is all about magnification on the bottom the times three, and that's when I'm using the lathe uh, or cutting, um, and I'm using the lathe to build bigger parts that are going to where, where the metal is going to fly off, and I don't want to get a shard in my eye, an eye shard. Those can be very painful. So more magnification. So this one here I tried. I thought that this would work. These weren't very expensive, by the way, just in case my wife is watching this video. 
she tends to watch my video and then she's got a calculator with her and then she adds up the price of everything I talk about. And so I don't want her coming back on me. So these ones here are what like dentists use, or this is the, uh, or your typical uh, corporate finance guy has one of these things. <laughs> so this is what they use. So I'm going to get in trouble saying that. Anyway, so these, uh, of course, there's caps on the end, and these, these are for focusing at a, at a fixed distance, right? Because you can't basically, you're focusing at a fixed distance with all this stuff. So, but anyway, these are for like dentists and stuff like this. They don't work for watch repair. Um, I'm sure there's a use for them I can figure out eventually one day. But they're not that expensive online. You just buy these. Again, I'm not sure where they're made. Indonesia, let's say. So that's that. Um, so the last one of these, this kind of magnification I have, I bought in Italy, of all places. I was in Torino. I was in Torino. Torino. I was in Turin, Italy. Or Torino, Italy. you got to say it like you're Italian. So <coughs> I bought these in Torino, Italy. I was there on business. And they're called Ischenbach. 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 Probably Ischenbach. That's how, probably how you pronounce that. Ichen, ich bin ein Ischenbach. So I am half Swiss, so I can speak a little bit of German. Wo, wo gehen Sie? Einen bitte Bier, blah, 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 blah. Anyway. So these are cool. So these things here are like a double lens. See that? The double lens. One lens here, one lens here. And then there's little, little, Jobby do hickeys here. I love that word. My dad taught me that word. Little jobby do hickeys here, where you can actually adjust the uh, the uh, the focus of this thing. Geez, I hope the audio is on in this video. I'd be really pissed off if it, if it isn't. Anyway, you can adjust the focus on this, and you put this on, and it gives you perfect focus, perfect distance. And these are made for for working on electronics work and stuff like that. I'll tell you what I use them for. Every now and then, a part flies off. A part flies off of a watch and ends up on the floor. Right? So, I do my impersonation of Scooby-Doo. I get on my hands and knees on the floor, and I start hunting for the stupid part. And it's been, I made a video on one once, but it was a, I think it was a spring that came off from the uh, top of, a, of the balance cock jewel cap or something. Right? So, and I was looking everywhere for this. And this one, I just grab these, I put them on, I look down on the floor, and I take a powerful flashlight, and I have a very powerful flashlight back here. It's, the battery's dead, but I take this flashlight here, and it's super powerful. Look at that. Oh, my camera's not working. Look at that. So, looks like an ET own home. Anyway, I take a powerful flashlight, and I look, I take these, these things, and I look down, and they've been priceless for finding parts. I don't use them for work. I use them for finding parts. So again, for actually actual work, I use this and I use this. That's pretty much all I use. Now, that's for that kind of magnification. Now, I want when I want to actually look at some part really up close. Um, I bought this uh, from AliExpress. I think it cost me three dollars, and it's got a light on one side. If the light still works, yeah, a light on one side. Yeah, that works, and a little tiny. Uh, microscope on the other side and I can and I can get super close with this and look like it has an ultraviolet light too and I just look like this I go mm, like that and I can look like really close at something but I can't work with it I can just look so I've used that to see if there's a, a crack jewel on a watch and stuff and I used to use this a lot before I got my stereo microscope and <clears throat> so this is very useful another one I had was that I bought was this one here, which was a little bit more powerful. Again, same little light on the end. See, that works still. I'm amazed that these batteries last so long. Anyway, a little light on the end, and there's a little plastic thing so you don't go into the part. And you just twist it, twist the little dial here to adjust the uh, focus on it. You look through the end, and you can see, you can see molecules. Not really, but you can see problems in your skin. <laughs> By the way, never look at yourself through one of these things because the skin looks pretty ugly, right? So, so that's that's this stuff. So let me move this out of the way and, and show you this. So that's again what I use this flip over lens. It's the best. Forget everything else. This is what you need, okay? And you can buy these for like two bucks, and you just buy like a times times three and a times five. And if you really wanted, you could buy like a times seven or something as well. But but really, a times three and a times five should be good enough. 
for, for uh, doing watch repair work. Um, so then if I have, let me just move everything out of the way here, this is a little bit of a mess here, but if I've got to really look at stuff, right, and I'm talking um, uh, hairspring work, I'm doing hairspring work and I'm trying to figure out what to do and blah blah blah, I bring out the stereo microscope, this thing is priceless, not cheap, it'll cost you probably use anywhere from a thousand to two thousand dollars. It has a pretty big surface on the bottom here. Um, I don't know if you can see that, maybe not. I should move it down a bit just so you can see it. It's got a pretty big surface surface right here so you can work on your part. Um, this the microscope actually uh, comes out of the stand. So if I just loosen this and see if I can figure out how this is done. There's a little knob there and you can actually pick the microscope itself out of the stand. That's the microscope and there's a stand here. Right? So the stand actually holds the microscope, the stereo microscope, and then it's got a, a ring of lights, of LED lights on the side. So put that back in, like that, and there's a little thing on the side you tighten it. And this is a, 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 a zero or two, it says two, two to 70 focus. So I get seven times or 70 times focus on that. Um, and then you can, and it's actually it's zoom. So two to 70 zoom on this, right? And you get the focuses here. You go up and down here. And if your part is up higher, and you loosen the back part here, and you raise the whole microscope up, and then you're focused again, right? So then you have a little light switch here, so I just turn that on, like that. So it's lit up, and it's got pretty pretty intense, right? So the other thing about this is that you can actually take the lens out of here, this lens out of here, and I've got a camera lens with a USB on it, and that's in this box right here. And so you take that, and let me do it really quick so I don't bore you to death. I don't want to bore anybody here. So so that's this is the camera here. Um, so if I want to do videos of what I'm doing, I take that out here. I know this just talking about all this stuff is going to make you basically spend money, right? So you take that like this, take off the lens cap like that, and there it is, right? It's a CE, some CE chip in there or something like that. And you throw in the adapter. I forgot the adapter. You get an adapter with it. You put the adapter in like this, like that. You put the camera in like that, and there's a USB cord. And you plug the USB cord into the camera, like that, and you plug the whole thing into your computer. And your computer will recognize, you got Windows 10, your computer will recognize the camera right away, and all of a sudden you're videotaping um, the movement of something that you're concerned with, uh, so you can look at it later. It's, this one here isn't like super high definition. I don't have, it's not like a 1080p uh, video. I think it's pretty low actually, but it's good enough to, for me to videotape things if I've got an issue. And what I do is I spot it on this side like a sniper. So I do my spotting on this side, and I know what I see here is what I'm going to see here. Because they're aligned perfectly as a stereo microscope. So I spot it on this side, focus it, and away I go. So that is, that is the um, camera I got. Uh, again, if you buy these online um, from AliExpress perhaps, um, they're not that expensive. So I think I paid maybe 60 bucks for this camera, which is pretty good to get the, this kind of quality. Um, so it's not that expensive. It works really well. Um, and I use it, I don't use it a ton of time, but when I do need it, I got it, right? So that's kind of important in watchmaking. You, there's a lot of tools that you don't use a lot, but when you need them, like I put a jewel in, an impulse jewel in the other day, and I have all the tools to put in an impulse jewel, and I don't do it very often. But when I have to do it, I need that tool. So there you go. So, so this is a freaking really useful tool to have for watchmaking. If you're going to do any work, you got to have a, a stereo microscope. And the stereo part is needed because, first of all, it sounds cool. <laughs> so now your stereo microscope gives you depth. So if you need you need depth when you're working with pocket watches or watches. So you can't really get in there with the tools unless it's stereo and you have depth, right? So you understand that you're maneuvering parts or moving hairsprings or that sort of thing. You're going to screw it up unless you have the stereo part of the stereo microscope. So, oop, put that away. Anyway, that's, uh, I think I've covered 99.9% .9 of uh, watchmaking and magnification discussions. So, mm -hmm, like that. So, so, um, if you have any questions about what I've said, um, then you can uh, send me a note and I'll answer them. Uh, but basically, as I said, I got, after spending a lot of money on all this other stuff, I ended up with this. 
ending up with this. And I got special permission from my significant other to get that. So, like every other happy, happily married man, yes, dear. Anyway, she let me buy it. Let me buy it. <laughs> so, there you go. That's magnification. I don't think there's anything else that I magnify with, right? Magnum PI. So, so I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I'm going to try to put that in line right now so you'll see it tonight and answer some of the questions that people might have had uh, reference magnification. Um, if your eyes are, are set different and you can't buy a pair of these, you could get the uh, uh, prescription glasses and then put the loop over the prescription glasses. So that's another thing too. Try to keep it clean. Like Try to keep your glasses clean so you, uh, you can work and everything stays healthy and use your glasses to stay healthy. Um, and don't strain your eyes. It's very important when you're working on watches to take a break every now and then and to not be there like for eight hours solid wearing wearing these glasses and loops. So you'll get out of there and be like, holy Jesus. So you will be like a 24-7 guy in a mud hole with a sniper rifle for four days. So you don't want to be that guy. So anyway, so there you go. Stereo stuff. I'll end the video now. It's been way too long already. So that's a stereo... Sorry, that's, that's magnification. It's magnification. Forget stereo, okay? Somebody said I should always play some guitar at the end of the video, so it makes it just a bit different. So let me grab a guitar here, and I'll play uh, Romance on Guitar for five seconds. Here we go, here we go. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.